What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Next Year Nero, and I got another review for you. Today is going to be the long-anticipated Starfield, man. I got over 200, probably coming up on 300 hours uh, into the game. I've absolutely been loving it. It is one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, Skyrim is what introduced me to what RPGs is when I was younger, and I fell in love with that game. Played it every... I really played it across four different consoles. Uh, bought it on my PS3, bought it on my 360... Then I bought it on my Xbox One and bought it on my PS4. And, uh, man, <laughs> if they came out with a remake of Skyrim again, I'd buy it again. That's how much I love that game, right? So this uh, review is going to be broken up into 10 points, right? Um, from graphics, music, story. Like, it's just, you know, different different points, you know, because I want to touch. It's so much to touch on in this game. I had to, like, really sit down and write how I wanted this to go. So before I get started... Please leave your boy a like. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Share this. If you like Starfield as much as I do, let me know below in the comments. And if you don't, that's okay. Not every game is meant for everyone. It's perfectly fine. Let me know what you didn't like. Um, I'm a Bethesda fanboy. I absolutely loved it. Can't wait for the Elder Scrolls 6 and Fallout 5. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is graphics and gameplay. These graphics to me is truly next gen, right? The lighting is absolutely beautiful. I'm playing on the Xbox Series X. For this to be in 30 FPS, I don't know what Microsoft got going on over there, but they games in 30 FPS feel so insanely good. I don't know if it's the Xbox technology group doing something behind the scenes or some like really high quality motion blur, but this game felt really good. And I was very upset leading up to the game release when they said it was going to be 30 FPS. I did not agree with it. Uh, I was pretty upset because, um, you know, the Series X is so powerful. I'm like, man, we should get this. But look, it's absolutely worth it, man. The graphics, in my opinion, is top tier for this generation of gaming. That global illumination is so beautiful. When you step off your ship for that first time on a new planet or a new area, it's just a crazy feeling that you can't get nowhere else, right? It's untouchable, and Starfield does that so insanely good. I absolutely love it. And the gameplay is very smooth, man. You know, a lot of people complain about loading screens, this, that, and the third, but it loads very quick. You know, would you like, would I like to see less loading screens? Of course, I think we all will. But when your screens is loading this quick and you can jump from one star system to the next within two, three seconds, you know, that that's very impressive. And you won't hear me complaining too, too much about that. So graphics and gameplay is top tier. I think it's the best in Bethesda Game Studios. As far as gameplay, I think it's the best. As far as graphics, I also think it's the best. Absolutely loved it, right? So the second point I want to touch on is the music and sound design. Starfield has the best tracks and music in the game this generation, I would say, right? Now, it's really tough because Hi-Fi Rush released this year. And I've been playing Alan Wake 2 as well, and them soundtracks is absolutely top tier. But the fact that I'm over 200 hours into Starfield, and I'm just every time some music played during a fight, during exploration, even just sitting down and just chilling on my ship, it's just so perfect, man. They absolutely killed it with the sound design. You feel what I'm saying? The music is perfect. The sounds of the guns is awesome. The ships, the landing, the taking off, the space battles, everything just sounds really good. So I'm I'm big on sound design and, and good music and games. And, you know, Bethesda absolutely nailed this. And they have been doing it for decades. You know, Skyrim music is also a big thing that's very memorable to me. Just exploring that game and, you know, everything you can do in that game and just traveling hearing that music it's just it's so good man and i'm happy bethesda still is killing it in that department now the story and attention to detail for me for me personally i think this is by far one of if not the best stories in a bethesda game right um the attention to detail is insane for me the story had a couple twists and I'm not going to spoil it, right? I want to make this as spoiler-free as possible. The story had a lot of, a, a handful of twists that I didn't see coming. And the way they did the New Game Plus is insane, right? Like, you can go up to eight or nine New Game Pluses and just, you know, it give you different uh, outcomes and different ways to play and different dialogue options every time you beat the game and learn something new. To me, I think that is very dope. It's a lot of attention to details. It's just very good all around, man. I can't complain about the story. Um, you know, it's, I love the God of Skyrim, but the main storyline is it's not what's memorable for me, right? The the most memorable things in there is the side factions and and um, you know the the thieves guild, the companions, you know all those side stories and, and sub quests and, sh and stuff like that, right? So I think Starfield main story is absolutely amazing. I really liked it, and it has great attention to detail, and that leads me into 
My fourth talking point, and that's side content and things to do. The side content in this game is God tier. The factions, right? I'm going to just speak on one faction. The Vanguard factions. The Vanguard faction storyline is arguably better than a lot of these main games that's been coming out storylines. That storyline is so good and has so much flexibility and it's so interesting. Right. I, I would argue it's dang near right up there with the main campaign. So the Vanguard had a great campaign for his factions. I also liked the Ryujin storyline. And then it's like little side storylines and, and, and cities like Neon. And you can join gangs and do little things like that. Uh, I, I liked it, all the factions quests. But the Vanguard for me is definitely the go to for sure. Right. So it's a lot of good side content. It's a lot of good side missions. It's a lot of things to do. I love it, man. I, I think it's really dope. And, you know, what I'm going to include in side content is exploration, right? I see a lot of people saying, just play the story. I'm not really meant for exploration. I'm sorry, but I'm a Mass Effect fan. And I argue I love Mass Effect 1 over 2. And I'm going to tell you how this plays in, right? In Mass Effect 1, you can land on planets. Not every planet, but you can land on a handful of planets. And those planets was completely barren was completely empty they were just empty planets to run you run to the little spot you go in you fight husk or whatever you're doing but guess what i absolutely love that because in space a lot of planets is barren i get that but the just the satisfaction of landing on a new planet stepping off my ship and just exploring whether there's things there or not for me that's just the space junkie in me i, I love that i think that is awesome and starfield does that times 10 for me Right. I, I made a whole specific build to be an explorer, an exploring trait background. And, and that's my personal story. Right. And my character I made. And I just dedicated this build to just fully surveying the galaxy, fully surveying these planets and stuff. And playing like that, I have to disagree with a lot of people. I get like, you know, people want that handcrafted worlds and they might not like procedural generated. But I have land on some absolutely jaw dropping vistas, some jaw dropping gem of planets right and i found so much dope shit on these planets and yeah sometimes you might run into you know rehash uh things like you might oh didn't i run into this oral rig on another planet before like that does happen right i'm gonna be fair with that that does happen but it's so much to do and discover in these worlds and planets that i feel like it's worth it you know when you land on a moon and you look up and you can see the planets or when you land on a planet and you look up and see the moons and then you can say, you know what, I can go to that moon. Then you land on that moon and look up and see that planet. To me, that's beautiful, man. That's everything I wanted to do in a Mass Effect game and more. Mass Effect is one of my favorite games of all time. Up there with Outer Worlds, you know, Skyrim and Starfield, man, has taken the spot, right? And I just think it's a lot of side content. It's a lot of things to do. And I have to keep saying that because even building relationships with your companions and your partners, right? So I only reach max companionship with Sarah, right? So these characters got a lot of lore that when you hang with them, you can learn. You can do whole playthroughs for each of your side companions just to focus on them. You know, I want to fall in love with uh, Sam Cole, right? And see how that plays out with his daughter. Could I be like the mother-in-law or something like that? I want to see what's up with Barrett because he has such a funky, fun attitude. It's awesome, right? And I want to, I wanted Andresia, you know, I stand for her and Sarah. So I feel like that's really dope, man. And I love it, man. So it's a lot of things to do. So I love it. And, and that's what Bethesda games are known for. Content, content, content. It'll be played for the next 10 years, and I'm all here for it. So the fifth thing I want to talk about is space combat. I think the space combat is very good. I feel like it can be clunky at times and on higher difficulties. It, sometimes it might be better to just try to avoid it or maybe even knock the difficulty down a little bit if your ship is not where it needs to be. But I feel like the space combat is very dope. You know, for Bethesda to have never made you know like a space shooter or nothing like that i think for this to be their first time they absolutely nailed it uh it feels good when you get your ship the way you want it the combat and the it's just satisfying you know you can board the ships you can blow it up you can try to uh, rob and smuggle people if you want to be a pirate so i think the space combat is very fun it's very solid not the best ever but when you think about the best ever space combat that's from games that's just strictly in space so when you take into consideration that you land in you can explore you got a dope story dope shit to build out you know and 
to include this in the space combat, the ship building is very dope too. It can be, it can take you a little minute to understand and learn everything. But once you do, man, you can really make some beautiful ships out here, man. And you know, the, the creations is endless. You know, if you want to make a Star Wars type ship or, um, you know, one of your favorite space movies or series, you know, Star Trek or anything like that, you can really do it, man. And I think that's really dope for the creators out there. And while I'm speaking on creating things, you know, outpost building is great as well. I've seen people build whole like little communities and stuff on planets where, you know, they're actually manufacturing goods and people is coming, landing there and they really building their own little ecosystem. And I think that's very dope, man. Uh, and I don't think Bethesda and Starfield get enough credit for letting people build. You know, the only other game I can really think of is uh, Halo, you know, with Forge, letting people create a lot of things, right? That's very dope. So the sixth thing I want to talk about is the gunplay. By far the best gunplay uh, BGS Studio has ever put out. It wipes the floor with any Fallout gunplay. And I know that might not be saying a lot to some people, but I'd argue this gunplay is right up there with some of the best shooters that Xbox own as far as like... Um, I'm going to use Wolfenstein, for example, right? I'm not going to say it's better than Wolfenstein, but it's, it packs that punch, and it's so it's so satisfying fighting. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I want to fight. Even on my characters where I'm not, like, you know, a fighter, I still want to fight because that's how good the, the gunplay feels. It's very good, very, very good. I absolutely love it, and I can't wait to see how Fallout 5 feels, right? Uh, I will say I had a few friends that played melee builds, but they said the melee wasn't the best. Um, so, you know, maybe they still haven't gotten that down, but maybe they can take a huge leap, leap with the Elder Scrolls 6, right? And uh, the seventh thing I want to talk about is the new Bethesda world, right? This this is a fresh new world full of new lore. I think that's great. Uh, I could tell they was very passionate about this with it being a new world. I feel like it was very fresh, very new, you know, and it's refreshing to get a new IP, right? That's why I love um, Hogwarts and High Five Rush as well. Um, I don't want to keep replaying and playing same games that I've been playing since the last generation and the generation before. So I love the new Bethesda world they have built, and the possibilities is endless. You know, hopefully we can get a show. I can't wait to see what the DLC is going to be like. Uh, I'm super happy for Bethesda. I'm super happy for Todd Howard and Xbox. They needed a game like this, and for me personally, I love it. So the eighth thing I want to talk about is replayability. With Bethesda Game Studios, they're always known for being able to replay them and have different builds and different outcomes. And when I tell you I got about six different characters, all extremely different from each other, the replayability in this game is huge, right? I'm going to just be honest. The game is going to be played for the next decade. That's why I say it's my game of the generation, right? Alan Wake might be my game of the year, but Starfield is definitely my game of the generation because it's going to be played forever, right? It's going to be played for so long, just like Skyrim. And when you add my support into this thing, oh boy, oh boy, be prepared to have a great time. Man, they killing it, man. And like I said, they and you, you can do... Five, six, seven new game pluses, man, and keep getting different outcomes. I see people steady just going through the campaign, getting different outcomes and stuff. So the replayability is through the roof, and uh, I love that for the, I love that for the fans, and I love that for Bethesda. Right. The ninth thing I want to talk about is voice acting, top tier, absolutely top tier. I haven't met one bad voice actor in this game. Everybody sounds really good. Even the, the goofy type people, you know, you might chuckle at some of the voice acting. You can tell it was like they was trying to be cringy just so it can fit the character. But I think this is some of the best voice acting in a Bethesda game to date, man. Um, really good acting all around. You know, that goes back to my earlier points with the sound design. Voice acting is just top tier, right? I really love that, man. So they killed it. All my companions sound cool. Sam Cole sound dope. Barrett sounds good. Sarah sounds good. Even Vasco, the robot. I love everybody voice acting in this game. And I'm happy that we don't have a voice actor. I know Bethesda originally created that. But I like to leave it up for the imagination. You know, just like in Fallout, uh, Fallout New Vegas, right? Leave it, let, me, let me be the voice in my head while I read my response, right? I think that's very dope. I, I love that. And the last but not least, my 10th point is freedom of play. There's a lot of great RPGs out there. Cyberpunk. The Witcher. Right? Boulder's Gate 3. But what I love about Starfield, right? Okay, so let's just compare Starfield to Cyberpunk. Both generational defining RPGs, in my opinion. Cyberpunk, I call that a set RPG, right? And same thing with Richard, because you're set in the shoes of V or Geralt. That don't mean it's not an RPG because you're still role-playing as V or role-playing as Geralt, right? And they're great games. When I look at Starfield, I look at it as an open RPG, meaning you're playing as whoever you want to play. You're not set 
as somebody, right? You're not set as V or you're, you're open, right? You can, you can, it, it, and I feel like Bethesda is one of the only studios that's still making truly open RPGs, right? Letting you be what you want to be and defining your story, you know, however you want to do it. And I think that's very dope, man. And I don't think, you know, Bethesda or Starfield would ever get enough credit for that. I love it, man. I absolutely love it, man. I love this game. I love this universe. I love this world. If I had to put a, a number on it, easy. Nine out of ten. 9.5 out of ten. I love it, man. Thank you so much, Bethesda. Thank you so much, YouTube, all my supporters. If you made it to the end of this video, I am truly grateful for each and every one of you that sat around. This is my longest game review to date. 16 minutes. I love doing what I do. I have not made a dollar off of gaming. But that's not why I do this. I do this because I love gaming and I love the gaming community. Thank you, Todd Howard. Thank you, Phil Spencer. Thank you to all my supporters. It's been your boy Next Gen. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.